lot of drama in the game. There were five in the majors, five on threes, and you know we had the six on four with a, a minute and a half to go in the game. Um, I like the way our team played. I told them after the game I don't like the outcome, but you know I like the way we played, and I think that the, the game-winning goal was a reflection of you know playing with fire with BU. You can't turn pucks over. Um, it was kind of a costly turnover that led to a two-on-one. Um, but, like I say, that's, um, that was a good effort for Northeastern. I just I feel bad for the guys in the room that they didn't at least get a chance to go to overtime, particularly in the six-on-four. And, and the way the six-on-four played out was, was unusual. It shouldn't have been over on that side. Um, we didn't get a, a lot of quality shots. For that much, much time left in the game, um, it was a real vanilla power play. And um, you know, it, it, it probably could, it did cost a chance to go into overtime. Uh, questions, please, for Kyle. Questions? Raise your hand. Microphone will come down to you. Identify who you are. Your affiliation will go from there. Kevin Adelson, Inside Hockey. Kyle, can you talk us through that goal you scored? Such a big momentum boost uh, for you guys so uh, Well, uh, we got a 5 on 3, and it was a 5 on 4. I think it was in a sport. Uh, we just wanted to puck down in the net, uh, create traffic on the line. He was a great, he's a great boy, so uh, we got to create traffic on him and sort of playing and then he shot it and you know. Much else to say, I guess. What did you do for the bench? Uh, oh, like that. I mean, we scored that goal. I thought we were going to the game. Uh, we had the momentum going. We, uh, next shift down, we were in their zone, getting shots on net, and uh, the bench was as good as it's been all game, probably all year. Uh, we, were, we all thought we were going to win, and it's a shame. Did you play good? Did we play better? Yeah. Kyle, Andy Merritt from the New England Hockey Journal. Was it maybe a case of spending so much energy, so much emotion, getting through the, the five-minute major, getting through the power play, scoring that goal, that right after that, did it feel like you guys had anything left right, right away? Yeah, probably had a lot left. Uh, I mean, our team was going going as good as we can all game. Uh, we didn't let down. I don't think all game we kept going. BU scored. We kept going. We scored and we, I thought we played better when we scored after that. Um, it's a big momentum change when we got that goal. So. Uh, Elliot, right down here. Elliot Elliot and CAA.com. Kyle, uh, watching the game tonight and, and the atmosphere, uh, you would never guess the records of the two teams weren't what they were when you guys played last year. Uh, how much of that do you think, I mean, what do you think accounts for that? How much of it comes from you guys and from being, and from being here, and how much of it comes from having your fans going back and forth at it with B, uh, BU's fans up in the, up, up in the balcony? Like, what do you think makes the atmosphere of this game? Uh, just the playing the garden and being part of the history, uh, like all the great players I've played in it, and uh, seeing the fans up there just going at it, just, uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, playing college hockey in Boston is probably the best thing for a college kid. I think playing uh, football in Texas, same thing with hockey here. Um, just like I mean, looking up in the balcony and seeing just the packed fans and view and like that new fans at the same side is pretty cool. So. Okay. Scott Weiger, U.S. College Hockey Online. Kyle, he has a long history of seemingly finding a way to win these close games, uh, particularly against Northeastern over the last couple of decades. Does the history of it enter into the minds of the guys at all when you're playing out there, like, uh, this sort of mystique that you might have? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, we know that BU is a great team, and uh, we need to us come out here to win. We'd have to play the game like we did tonight. We played all three periods, I thought. Uh, I mean, that doesn't really get in our heads, I don't think. We're just going to go out and play like on the ice. Um, get pucks in, work check hard, get shots, kill penalties, do good on power play. Uh, use a good team, and they play great, and that's what we win. Uh, any last questions for Kyle, please, before we uh, let him uh, go and shower and change? <coughs> Thanks a lot for a lot, Kyle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, questions for Coach Conner? Jim. Great, Jim Conley from U.S. College Talk Online. It, there seemed like a number of times you guys forced the turnover high in the zone and got the numbers going on, on the break, but most of those times you still couldn't penetrate what was left of the BU defense coming back. On the other hand, they get one two on, good two-on-one and they end up scoring. 
Can you just take us through what, why it was so difficult to penetrate their defense and make the plays once you got those odd man rushes? Well, the, the qualified Kyle's comment, the best team, the better team won the game. And that's, uh, that's, uh, those comments to me are superficial. Um, I think BU played a terrific game. They did a good job keeping us to the outside. My biggest problem with any time we had an odd man rush or even a, an even man rush is we wouldn't shoot the damn puck. I mean, right before Wade McLeod, uh, there was a penalty called on. He was standing all along in front of the slot. He wouldn't shoot it. And, uh, you know, Alvy O'Connell up above kept radio down. Why won't they shoot the puck? I mean, you reflect back on the game, and I, I would say, conservatively, we had six chances with the puck on our stick right in front of BU's net, and we refused to shoot the puck. Uh, and part of that was because they were doing a nice job putting their bodies in, in front of the shot lanes. And part of it was guys were trying to, you know, to pick a better apple. And, and that's, in a game like this, it was a playoff type of game. You get scoring chances in the slot. You got to shoot the puck. And give Chase on credit. He held it and held it and head up held it. And I actually thought our defenseman played it well and somehow it snuck through Chris. But, you know, it was a, it was a combination of two things. They did a nice job blocking shots and we just didn't want to shoot it. Coach, same question I asked Kyle. Basically, uh, obviously it's been a long time since Northeastern has been able to beat BU in the tournament and so forth. Does the history of that no. weigh on you at all? No. Never think about it. Uh, Jared Schaffer, Huntington News. Uh, Coach, I think, uh, I mean, in the beginning of the game, BU obviously had a lot of chances on Chris Rawlings. Uh, being that he's a freshman in the Beanpot, what, what would you think of his play? Because it seemed like he made a couple good saves to just keep you guys in the game as you guys settled down. I think the first 10 minutes, it was, it was a, I think we had a pretty good rhythm. And um, we had some chances, misfires. We had an opportunity to go up one nothing early in the game. I think what happened was they got a power play, and they got a little juice off the power play. And then for about five minutes, with two straight shifts, we couldn't get out of the zone in the first period where they were throwing a lot of pucks at the net. And, um, you know, goalie will tell you in the first part of a game like this, when there's not a lot of rubber coming at you, you can get a little bit antsy back there. And I thought Chris was really good responding to that that back-to-back -back shift of, of uh, BU throwing pucks at him. And, um, again, when your goalie plays well, it gives your team a lot of confidence. And um, I thought Owen did the same thing for them on some of the chances we had early in the game.